So we discussed the desire to produce a really small uh, output current. So here's our low current solution. If we'd like our output current to be very small, especially compared to our input current, we're going to use what's called a Widlar current source. So our Widlar current source we're going to modify from the regular current mirror. So we start out with our basic VBE generator, but in this case, we're going to add a resistance to the bottom of our output current device. We'll call this resistance R2. The reference resistor will label R1, Q1 here, Q2 here. So we have a VBE1, and we'll note that our VBE2 is no longer going to be exactly the same. So we're not mirroring the current, we're altering it. So here, our output current comes through uh, transistor Q2. Now, one thing that we might note is we'd like our current sources to have a high output resistance, and we would note that the resistance looking into the collector of Q2 is higher than the basic current mirror. So our output resistance, RO, would be equal to RO2, the output resistance of the transistor, times 1 plus GM2 times R2. So that's good. We get higher uh, uh, output resistance, which is something that we desire. Okay, what we note uh, here is that what we're effectively doing is scaling the output current uh, through uh, the collector of Q2 by reducing its VBE relative to the VBE of the reference generator. So we're reducing VBE2 relative to VBE1. So how do we solve this particular circuit? Well, we're going to write a KVL loop. Around this loop I1. So we'll do KVL at this loop I1. And we'll see VBE1 is equal to VBE2 plus VR2. So this is equal to VBE2 plus 1 divided by alpha times IC2 times R2. Or we can neglect the alpha term since alpha is most likely approximately equal to 1. Rearranging, we can write IC2 is equal to VBE1 minus VBE2. And we can substitute in expressions for VBE. Oops, this is IC2 times R2, sorry. We're going to substitute in expressions for VBE1 and VBE2. So we know that VBEs are equal to VT times the natural logarithm of the collector current of the transistor with respect to its saturation current. to assume that Q1 is equal to Q2. And what this means is that the saturation currents of the transistors are equal, so IS1 would be equal to IS2. So we can combine everything together and say IC2 times R2 is equal to VT times the natural logarithm of IC1 over IC2. 
And what we'll note with this solution is that we have uh, two e equations, uh, and we uh, and, and the other thing that we'll note is that this is uh, sorry we have a couple of unknowns in this equation, and, and what we'll note. Uh, about this particular equation is that there's no solution uh, for this. We have to find it by trial and error. So we might define a reference current, IC1, uh, and then choose uh, a resistance, R2, uh, that would meet the solution that we're looking for. So we, we, if we knew what our input current and output current were, then we'd have to find the R2 that gave us the proper solution. So generally, that's going to be the case. We're going to know how much power we want to spend on generating our reference, and we're going to know how much power or how much current we want at the output. So we'd have to find R2 to meet that solution. So we'll know I out and RF, and we'll probably uh, I ref, and we'll probably iterate to find R two. All right. In the next part of the lesson, we'll start looking at cascode current sources.